Macroautophagy is a fundamental cellular process that eliminates molecules and subcellular elements, including nucleic acids, proteins, lipids, and organelles, via lysosome-mediated degradation to promote homeostasis, differentiation, development, and survival. Autophagy involves the formation of double membrane structures called autophagosomes that envelop damaged or dysfunctional cellular components. These autophagosomes then fuse with lysosomes where the contents are broken down and recycled. Autophagy is vital for removing damaged or misfolded proteins, clearing out aged or dysfunctional organelles, and responding to cellular stress, such as nutrient deprivation and oxidative damage. It helps maintain cellular homeostasis and ensures the efficient use of resources. Autophagy is initiated in response to various cellular signals, including nutrient deprivation, energy stress, or the presence of damaged organelles or protein aggregates. The UNC51-like kinase 1 or ULK1 complex includes ULK1, FIP200, and ATG13, and these play a key role in autophagy initiation. The mTOR complex, which we have discussed earlier, is a negative regulator of autophagy, and when mTOR activity is inhibited, autophagy initiation is promoted. A small membrane structure called the phagophore, or isolation membrane, begins to form. It is derived from membranes within the cell, typically the endoplasmic reticulum, but other sources can contribute to phagophore formation. The class 3 phosphatidylinositol free kinase complex, which includes Beclin 1, VPS34, VPS15, and ATG14, are essential for the nucleation of the phago 4. The phago 4 elongates and expands to enclose cellular components destined for degradation, such as damaged organelles or protein aggregates. This process involves the conjugation of ATG12 to ATG5, as well as the formation of ATG8 family proteins that are lipidated and integrated into the phago 4 membrane. These lipidated ATG8 proteins are commonly used as markers for autophagic structures. The fully formed autophagosome fuses with a lysosome to form an autolysosome, which contains the decorative enzymes required to break down the engulfed cargo. Fusion is mediated by snare proteins, Rab GTPases, and other factors, ensuring the delivery of the autophagosome's contents to the lysosome. Upon fusion with the lysosome, the cargo within the autolysosome is subjected to enzymatic degradation by lysosomal hydrolases, resulting in the breakdown of cellular components into their constituent molecules. After degradation, the breakdown products such as amino acids, fatty acids and sugars are released into the cytoplasm and made available for cellular processes such as energy production or biosynthesis. Following the degradation of cargo, the autolysosome components can be recycled to form new autophagosomes, thus allowing the process to continue. With age, the efficiency of autophagy can decline, resulting in the accumulation of damaged cellular components and dysfunctional organelles. This accumulation can lead to cellular dysfunction and impair the body's ability to respond to stress. This can lead to the accumulation of protein aggregates, damaged mitochondria, and other cellular debris. Unlike the previous nine hallmarks, the links between autophagy and aging are not fully understood. This is partly due to the fact that this hallmark, and the next two to follow, were only recently added to the hallmarks of aging. One 2021 research paper suggested that suppression of autophagy early in the life of Canohabditis elegans, a roundworm which is being studied extensively by anti-aging researchers, found that it negatively affected longevity. However, the knockdown of a specific subset of autophagy genes in mature adults had the opposite effect. I've been asking around the lifespan.io discord but haven't had much success in finding research pertaining specifically to that which combats disabled autophagy, but most of what I can find is still focused on understanding the process, opposed to strategies and therapies to combat it. I know there are plenty in the longevity community that believe due to all these processes being interconnected, it won't be necessary to target these last three hallmarks specifically. I guess time will tell.